you may have heard the concept of a non-destructive workflow, and it's really important for maximum flexibility to pursue this whenever you want to work in Photoshop. When we opened up our raw image, by holding shift, we created a smart object. And it's really simple to see how powerful this can be. You can double click on a smart object. And in this case, it's going to reopen all the camera raw controls. The raw image is still there along with our settings and we can still play with the settings. We haven't lost any power during this. Now, smart objects don't always do just that camera raw access. Let's make a new document and I'm going to make a couple of layers and I'm going to put a big pink splodge on one and a big yellow splodge on another. And if I select both of those layers together, just by shift clicking on the second one, I can right click and convert to smart object. Now a smart object has the same icon that we saw before, but the difference is I can't work directly on it. If I try to use the brush tool, I'll get a warning like this. The smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Do I want to? The answer is almost always no, no you don't. So how do I edit those layers? How could I move one up and one down? The answer is you double click on the smart object and you can access its contents. I can move these layers around, they're still separate layers, but notice it's a PSB document, not a PSD. And effectively, it's a document inside another document. And when I save, not save as, and close it down, I'll see that I've updated it in its parent file, if you like. All the changes I made in the smart object have been reflected. The other reason you might want to use smart objects is because filters can be applied to smart objects, or most of them can. So if I was to sharpen with unsharp mask, I'm effectively sharpening all of these layers at once. So I'll crank up the settings to make it obvious. And now you can see it's applied to both of those at once. You might want to convert all the layers in a Photoshop file into a smart object to be able to sharpen them all at once. And it means there's no need to flatten things. The old school method of selecting all layers and pressing Command E or Control E to flatten really destroys your flexibility and it's not something I'd recommend doing. So how else can you work non-destructively? Quite simply, make new layers when you want to do anything. So let's say I'm working with this file. To do some retouching on it, I can't work on a smart object, so I'd make a new layer above it. Let's zoom in on this part of the file and we'll go to the spot healing tool and by default, sample all layers is turned off. So if I try to paint over this layer, it doesn't do anything because it's cloning from a blank layer. Turning sample all layers on means that it clones from what you see, the composite layer. And I can just paint like this and it works as you'd expect it to. By default, the spot healing brush gives you the content aware fill, which is what I want. Now there's a similar thing you can do with the other retouching tools like the healing brush tool, but I have to go to a little drop down menu, make sure it's not on current layer, but it's on all layers instead. It's also a good idea to push this little button in, which means that any adjustment layers in the image will be ignored when you're doing healing. Then that works in a similar way, cloning from the composite. The same thing is also true of the clone stamp tool. You need to make sure that all layers is ticked, not current layer, and you need to tick that little button in as well. If you get all of those things right, you should be able to simply make as many layers as you want. And this then gives you the flexibility to decide that maybe you don't like the retouching you've done earlier. You can turn it off. You can evaluate things on their own merits so you can see exactly what changes you've made. It lets you potentially turn some things down rather than completely off. So if you were doing a portrait retouching, you might remove all somebody's spots on one layer, but you might have a wrinkles layer, which you might reduce to 50% to let some of them shine through. Working non-destructively means that whatever you do, you can change your mind later. And it's a really important technique you won't get if you flatten everything. There is really no need to flatten your image down as you work. Go ahead and use some more hard drive space instead. Let's look more at how important layer masks can be.